So hello and welcome to the video. A couple of weeks ago I spent a night in London and I had the opportunity to book myself into one of a rather controversial chain of hotels properties in Bankside. It's the Citizen M chain and I thought I would tell you a little bit about that experience. Hi, I'm Matt. Over the last 25 years I've travelled a lot. I've lived in five countries on four continents. I've flown over 1.3 million miles. I visited over a hundred countries, every American state, but I'm nowhere near done. So subscribe to the channel so you can come with me. So this particular Citizen M hotel is located in the Bankside area of London. This used to be the sort of area south of the river that cabbies would refuse to go to after dark, but it has gentrified greatly over the years and is now the location of quite a large number of new hotels. Not perhaps Ritzes and Savoys, but decent properties that make a good, cost-effective base for a stay in London. It's situated midway between Waterloo and London Bridge tube stations, which is a little inconvenient, but if you can master London's buses, there are plenty passing close by which will get you where you need to go. It's really handy for the South Bank area, including the achingly trendy Borough Market. The hotel is located in a fairly unassuming building and the hotel's signage isn't overpowering but it's still pretty easy to find. When you enter the building you'll find a pleasant lobby area with a few seating zones which you can use for work meetings or to just hang out. The influence of chain restaurants like McDonald's can be clearly felt as this lobby had a very similar feel to the other Citizen M properties I've stayed in. This area trebles up as a cafe for breakfast and a bar in the evening. I didn't partake in either, I'm not a fan of hotel breakfasts in general, but when I passed by in the morning, quite a few people were taking advantage of the breakfast offering. Part of the chain's strategy is to be very tech focused, so you are encouraged to check yourself in using these terminals. This could also be described as a strategy to keep costs down, but let's give them the benefit of the doubt. I didn't film the experience but there were two Joneses registered that night so I needed help from the team member who was hovering close by. In fact every time I've checked in I've needed help as I recall and everyone checking in at the same time as me has needed help so perhaps their automation strategy does need some work. Over to me. So hello and welcome to the Citizen M Bankside. Who says I don't learn from my mistakes by videoing the room when I arrive and it's pristine rather than when I leave when it's not. So here is the room. Little entryway with some wonderful plastic hangers. That will be the bathroom. Sink in the room and then a double bed and this is where my problem first arose when I first stayed here not expecting the bed configuration to look at this when I was traveling with my partner it was quite inconvenient that the person who got the short straw with the window side of the bed has to then climb over the other occupant of the bed to get in and out and when you reach the mature age that I have and you have the mature knees that I have that wasn't a particularly fun experience so much so that we actually checked out early in a bit of a huff but I have since given them another chance particularly in New York where their location is superb and I have developed a bit of an affection for them particularly when traveling alone so obviously they maximise the space utilisation by having the bathroom half in and half out of the bedroom and you can separate those areas via this heavyweight screen. Probably not quite designed for privacy but designed for the perception of privacy. So let's have a closer look at this vanity unit. We've got a bin down here, Got the towels, a thing cunningly labelled as hair dryer so helps people find it. Um, we've got a fridge which is empty and not particularly 
particularly cold, but still. A couple of glasses, box of tissues, lamp, and some soap. Not abundant with toiletries, but it has soap. Then into the bathroom, and there's a couple of items here. Shower and shampoo, AM and PM varieties. Interesting enough. Someone really should design a universal hotel shower controller, as they always seem to be different and I always seem to struggle at first to get them to do what I want. This one actually wasn't too bad, and the shower had decent power, something I perhaps didn't expect as I was on the top floor. Another investment in automation from the chain is the inclusion of a tablet in every room to control the room's features. More of the McDonald's effect here, as it's been the same tablet in every room I've now stayed in. Some of these features are essential, such as the net curtains and the blackout blinds, which, by the way, were excellent. Some were less essential, such as the ability to set the mood lighting in the room. This is a sort of greenish light, which corresponds to a greenish light here. If you move that around to a blue, you get a bluish light. And if you move it around to a red, you get a reddish light. Whether that has much day-to-day -day applicability, I don't know. One differentiator of Citizen M is that the movies offered through the tablet are all included within your room rate. I quite like this as it makes downtime in your room more enjoyable. The range offered does include movies with adult themes though, which is something that's controversial. You see comments on this topic in most reviews you read on Citizen M properties. My view would be that if you don't like them, no one is forcing you to watch them. Ultimately, the most important part of any hotel stay is the bed, and Citizen M's was pretty good. I've always slept well at the properties, and Bankside was no exception. As I said earlier, the crucial question for a couple contemplating a stay is whether the configuration of the bed works for you. Actually, you could get three people in the room if someone is happy to bunk in this enormous drawer. Citizen M is an independent company which started in Holland and operates in a very competitive marketplace. Several major hotel chains have set up brands which are designed to be quirky and attractive to younger travellers who may be put off by the perceived formality of the parent brands. Whether they succeed in this is an interesting question, and I think Citizen M is to be applauded in being an independent disruptor in this space. They are certainly growing internationally. It's also worth noting that there's no loyalty programme, although they cost money to administer, so not having one is hopefully keeping the prices down. I paid £75 for my night and was very happy with the value I received. As I've previously explained, I'm not a slave to any hotel's loyalty programme and like to find independently owned properties that offer something different to the major chains. I've grown to like Citizen M, despite the relatively small rooms, and I will consider them seriously if they're present in a city I'm visiting. But only if I'm travelling solo. That bed configuration would be a deal breaker for me if I was travelling with someone else. So there you go, that is the Citizen M Hotel in Bankside, and a little bit about the wider group. Not for everyone, although perhaps it actually is. So leave me a comment if you've stayed at a Citizen M, or indeed if you would now consider them having had a good look at them in this video. Subscribe if you're new, and leave a like to this video as well. It really helps me out with the YouTube algorithm. So thanks for watching. I'll see you all again soon. Goodbye.